Well, hi there. Welcome to another Pearson production. Today we're going to look at the skeletal system and exercise. So the skeletal system. Well, the skeletal system includes bones in the body, for a start. Um, you don't necessarily need to know the bones, but you do need to know the skeletal system's functions. It maintains the body shape, supports it, and provides a structure to which the bones are attached. Its three main functions are movement, support, and protection. Okay, so what is movement? Well, bones meet and form joints, which act as levers. So tendons, which attach the bones to the muscles, allow a variety of movement, depending on which Your muscles then contract, which move the bones that they are attached to. So, for example, your hamstring is attached to your lower leg, so if you contract your hamstring, it will bend the knee. Okay, secondly, you have support. Now, the skeleton supports the body in a variety of positions, so when you're sitting, when you're standing, or when you're lying down, it's your skeleton that supports and enables you to do that. Your bones and skeletal system give your body the shape, and then the skeleton acts as a framework for your body, and it also affects composition and your frame size. Finally, we have protection. Obviously, the skeleton can protect vital organs from damage, so the cranium protects the brain, the ribs uh, protect the chest organs, so your heart, your lungs. There are obviously other examples too. For example, goalkeeper Peter Cech, uh, he got injured in a game of football. He got a knee in the head. If it wasn't for his cranium protecting his brain, uh, it could have been some serious brain damage. Have an idea of an example that you can use, a sporting example um, of all three of these, so you can explain it uh, if that question does come up in your exam. Okay, so moving on to joints and movement. Uh, you need to know how to apply this to sports as well. So the structure of joints. A joint is a place uh, where two or more bones meet. And joints allow a variety of movements. Uh, in GCSEP, you only need to know the following. So you need to know flexion, extension, adduction, abduction and rotation. Now, in order to prevent pain uh, through friction, which might be caused by our bones rubbing together, uh, we have uh, something called a synovial joint. So here is an example of a ball and socket joint. You'll see that there is cartilage on the end of the bones to stop them rubbing together. There is a synovial membrane. Inside is something called synovial fluid. The cartilage is made up of a group of cells which is sur surrounded by the fluid. It is elastic and it enables it to cushion and protect the ends of the bone. Now, different joints allow different types of movement. For example, the spine uh, is made by a number of small bones, uh, which allows the back to be flexible, which obviously is helpful for high jumpers. Uh, we're going to move on down to different types of joint. For example, the elbow joint. Now, it is a hinge joint, uh, which means actually the uh, like a door. Imagine a door can only go two ways. You open or close, so an elbow can only go two ways. Therefore, you can only straighten or bend your arm, which is known as, obviously, flexion and extension. So the most common example of flexion and extension is when you're eating. So you come up and then down when you're, when you're eating. Also, you've got a bicep curl, tricep dips. Um, there are lots of other sporting activities uh, that can also demonstrate this. Uh, another hinge joint is the knee. Uh, now, this is actually probably the most complex joint, and you'll probably hear that there's quite a lot of injuries that can occur in the knee joint. It is, allows, again, the knee to bend, which is flexion, or extension, depending on the activity. A common example of both of these movements is when kicking a football. So they strike the ball, and that is extension, or when they're bending, when they're preparing to kick it, that would be flexion. Now, at the knee joint, there can sometimes be a little bit of rotation, but not too much. It's mainly due to the fact that the tibia, the top of the, top of the uh, shin bone, and your femur, which is your thigh bone, are slightly rounded. In between this is the cartilage which stops them rubbing together and the joint is held, all those bones are held together by ligaments called cruciate ligaments and they tie across. Quite often they're the ones that footballers injure uh, or sometimes even rugby players injure and they'll have ACL reconstruction. So the knee joint is probably the joint in the body that takes the most strain uh, when doing exercise. Okay, so that covers the hinge joint. The second type of joint that you need to know about is the ball and socket joint. There are two in our body. We have the shoulder and our hip. Now, ball and socket joints are called this because the head of the bone looks like a ball and it fits into a socket which is shaped like a cup. Both the shoulder and the hip joints can produce uh, flexion, extension, adduction, abduction and rotation. 
like the hinge joints, the ball and socket joints are again protected by cartilage. The shoulder joint has more freedom than the hip joint and I, if I were you, I would strongly suggest that you choose the shoulder joint for any exams as opposed to the hip joint because the shoulder one is the most important one that you need to know for your exam. Some examples of the type of movement available at the shoulder and the hip. Make sure you take a note of those so when you're thinking about your sport examples, they are correct. Okay, so just a reminder of the types of movement available at the joints. So hinge, you have flexion and extension. And then for a ball and socket, you have the other five. All five are available at a ball and socket and, uh, joint. Okay, so moving on to exercise in the skeletal system. Now, there are many different things that can happen to the skeletal system after regular exercise. So it can help your bones de de develop and become bigger and strong. Exercise can also increase your bone density, which is the, the weight of the bone, and they'll become heavier and stronger. Finally, uh, your ligaments and tendons will become thicker and stronger, which will of course increase your joint flexibility. Okay, so weight bearing exercises, uh, what are these? Well, as you get older, um, your bones will lose density, strength and weight. Um, this is called osteoporosis. Weight bearing exercises such as tennis, walking, running, aerobics and sometimes everyday exercises can actually help prevent this. If too much bone density is lost, uh, it will result in a weak skeleton. Bones can then break easy. This condition is called osteoporosis. Exercise which strengthens the bone can prevent osteoporosis and then delay its onset. Exercises that are not weight-bearing are swimming, which is supported by the water, and then the cycling, which is supported by the bike. Now, moving on to uh, not a very nice section here, injuries to bones. So, it's in the nature of sport, people are going to get injured. Um, sometimes it hurts themselves, even when uh, every other possible precaution is taken. A fracture can happen, which is a broken or cracked bone. Fractures can occur from a blow or from severe twisting of a joint. Symptoms are likely to include pain. This will obviously depend on um, how, how bad and how severe the injury is. It's normally pain at the site of the injury. There might be swelling or bruising um, appearing afterwards. And the bone also may be deformed. It's a lovely picture there of a fracture. You might remember that as Jibril Cisse. He broke his leg playing football. Okay, there are several different types of fracture. Um, the four that you need to worry about, though, are a closed fracture, a compound fracture, a simple fracture, and a stress fracture. Okay, so firstly we will look at closed fractures. As you can see from the picture, not a very nice one, um, as the name kind of gives away really, the skin over the break is not damaged. Okay, so the fracture is closed, therefore it's underneath the skin. Doesn't stop it hurting though. Compound fractures, now these are the not very nice ones. This is, this is where a broken bone, as you can see in the picture, comes through the skin, so it actually rips the skin and it is visible to uh, anyone that's around. Okay, now a simple fracture takes place in one line um, with no displacement of any, any of the bone. So they include things like green stick fractures where only part of the bone is broken. Lastly, we have stress fractures. Now stress fractures are quite often referred to as um, overuse injuries because they can happen as a result of becoming fatigued or unable to absorb shock. So if you're constantly doing the same exercise, um, so some people might get shin splints that could actually lead to a stress fracture. They can also occur by increasing the intensity of exercise too quickly or wearing poor quality footwear. So if, you're, if you decide to change your exercise and go out running and you're not wearing the correct footwear, then you're putting yourself even more at risk. Uh, sometimes stress fractures are also linked to osteoporosis. Now, injury to joints. This is slightly less graphic than the others. So, joint, is, as we know already, is where two or more bones meet. They are very prone to injury because movement beyond the natural range of movement can tear and pull tendons and ligaments, which are most common injuries to joints. Frequent repetitive exercise can also result in injuries to joints, especially if you start a new training programme and you maybe do too much too soon, then you're more at risk of injuring, injuring at any of your joints. There are four injuries to joints that you need to worry about. You have tennis and golfer's elbow, dislocations, sprains and torn cartilage. First of all, we're going to look at tennis and golfer's elbow. Both of these conditions are overuse injuries uh, to tendons and the elbow joints. Tennis elbow results in pain on the outside of the elbow, usually from the wrong grip size or the wrong racket, whereas golfer's elbow is 
in pain on the inside. Moving on to dislocations. Now, a dislocation is when a bone at a joint is forced out of its normal position, often as a result of hard work or high intensity exercise or a hard blow. So it causes one of the bones to be displaced. The most obvious sign is the deformity and swelling of the joint uh, when it's locked in a position. Some of you might have seen a twisted knee for an Alice Dennis in year eight, I think, dislocated her knee, which wasn't very nice. That brings us on to sprains. A sprain is a damaged ligament. Most common sprains in sport is a twisted ankle, which happens a lot in invasion games. It occurs when stretching too, too far past the normal range of movement, but can also be caused by falling, twisting or a collision to the joint. The final injury that you can get in a joint is a torn cartilage. Now, as you can see, the cartilage is on the end of the bone there. That is a knee joint, and there's a lateral meniscus tear in the cartilage there. It will often result uh, be because of a twisted one foot. So if your foot gets stuck, sometimes your knee, one part of your knee will go one way, and then the other will just stay there, and you'll, you'll tear your cartilage, which is very painful. Wow, how do we stop these injuries, or how do we treat them? With just a little bit of rice, you got your rest, Ice, compression and elevation. So rest immediately, stop playing or training. It's really important. Ice, you need to give it a cold compression. Okay, get something to really reduce the swelling. Many people just use a, a bag of peas or something. So it still does the trick. Compression, this also limits swelling and may uh, for some time uh, provide pain relief. And then lastly, you've got elevation. You should always raise the injury and try and keep it raised where you can. On to the favourite part, diet. Uh, how does it affect your skeletal system though? Well, a calcium rich diet helps your bones grow and increase in de density. So when you're younger, you're probably told to eat and drink milk. The vitamin D is essential to growth and maintenance of your healthy bones. Uh, so that is when the skin is exposed to sunlight. Finally, anybody with a bad habit of smoking or drinking too much, uh, and that can actually cause a, have a toxic, toxic effect on your bones. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the section. There's quite a lot of information in there. We had functions of the skeletal system, so movement, support and protection. Joints and the structure of them, the different types of joint. Movement and the skeletal system, so what kind of movement is available at the joints. Then we looked at injuries to bones and then injuries to joints. And then finally the effect of diet. Make sure you have taken notes please and you are ready for the lesson. It's important because we're going to be in the common room and we've got a nice little carousel planned. Thank you. Last little quote. It's not how bad you want it, it's how hard you're willing to work for it. You can do this. You will be able to pass the exam if you put in the work. Just have a little bit of self-belief. Thank you and goodbye.